Mohini Bardwash, born on September 29, 1978, in Philadelphia, had a unique upbringing as the daughter of Indian and Russian parents raised in the Hindu faith, her name, Mohini, meaning illusion, or the one that mesmerizes, in Sanskrit, hinted at the remarkable journey ahead. From the tender age of four, she embarked on her gymnastic sadasi in Cincinnati, displaying early promise and determination. However, the road to success is never easy often paved with challenges. At 16 Mohini would leave the comfort of family for the better of her gymnastics. Houston was the home of the coaching she needed to advance. After the 95 World Championship trial, she decided to move to Houston to get some great coaching from the great Alexander. Mohini means illusion in Hindi. I'll tell no you. illusion there, John. Just dead on. At just 16, this led to a period of adversity. Alone in Texas in her own apartment, she faced temptation and distraction, risking her gymnastics dreams. She began to miss workouts, and while hanging out with new friends began to party and smoke. Although still training this period of uncertainty would go on a few years, and unfortunately her gymnastics would suffer. Still she was hopeful, she was putting in the numbers on every event for the Olympic trials competition. In 1995 in only her second international meet she performed this stunning beam routine. Her talent was unquestionable. When we look back at some of Mo's competitions that year, it's hard to predict if she will make the Olympic team. She placed first in the all-around and vault at the 1996 Pacific Alliance Championship. However, at the national championship, a disappointing tie for 12th. However, she was up from 15th the year prior. Unfortunately, this was not Mohina's moment. At the 96 Olympic trials, she finished 10th and missed the Olympic team by 075. Devastated Mo felt she missed her opportunity and she was right. There were too many stars and unfortunately they shined brighter that day. The 1996 U.S. Olympic team took gold in Atlanta. Mohini Bahardwas was just 0.075 from that gold medal. With sheer determination she would come back in 1997 and this started her unintentional road to glory. College triumph following her Olympic endeavors, Mohini embarked on a new chapter, embracing the collegiate gymnastics arena. Despite initial skepticism due to her rebellious past, she found a home at UCLA under the mentorship of Valerie Kondo's field. Through dedication and perseverance, she not only redeemed herself but flourished, earning accolades and becoming a beacon of inspiration for future generations. Mohini's talent would no longer be outshined, as an all-around athlete on the team, she helped capture the NCAA title for UCLA in both 2000 and 2001. Team coaches pushed her to stretch the limits of her training and development on power events like vault and floor. She also became uneven bar champion in 2000 and took the floor title in 2001. At the 2001 championship while competing all-around, she made a mistake on bars, a major disappointment as the score was one the team was counting on. But then something happened that would foreshadow a life-changing event she was not yet aware of. As the last athlete on beam, she was the deciding routine as to what team would take the championship. Pressure was enormous, but she was the perfect athlete for the job, as during her college tenure she had never fallen off the beam. Amanda, a 9.75 to eliminate Georgia. Jim Dogs looking on. In the stands, Mohini's dad, Kishal. Mohini has scored a 9.75 or better. Nine out of ten B routines this year. Remember, Bahardwaj scored a 9.4 on the bars. So the pressure is on. Flight series. Mohini scored a perfect 10 earlier this season against Georgia.
strong routine. Strength is a factor for her. She has a lot of strong strength moves in this routine. Showing her control. She needs to hit this dismount right here. Round back. After the most important beam routine of her life up to that point, as the routine that won UCLA the NCAA championship title, Mohini had newfound confidence. Combined with the experience of college, Mohini was determined to carry on once again. This time it was all or nothing, choosing to train and fulfill her Olympic dream. However financially it was not possible at the time. She remained positive. She took a part-time job waitressing to help cover training expenses. Mo's gym also did what it could to help support and held a raffle in her name. Word started to spread. Mo's gym mentioned the raffle to an important client and soon blessings would follow. One step further, Tony Potts uncovered her Olympic connection to one lucky gymnast. She doesn't want to go through life and feel like she missed, she missed something that she could have done. She is Mohini Bardwa, an Olympic hopeful who at 25, an age considered over the hill by most gymnasts, is going for the gold one last time. But between a full-time coaching job and training 42 hours a week, Mohini thought the trek would be financially impossible. That is, till Pam sponsored her mission. How important is it for you, Pam, to, to be here to support her uh, and to see her uh, alleviate some of the hardships? And with Mohini, it's great because I know it's an it's a instant impact in, in her life and she can realize her dreams. And So this is, more people should do it. You can have her in your corner when you go down for the trials and she'll be cheering and along with everybody else for you. Um, it'll definitely be great to have somebody there for me, and <clears throat> a celebrity no less is, is even better. <laughs> Pamela publicly sponsored Mo to train for the Olympic team. Unfortunately, Mo didn't qualify to continue after nationals as she finished 12th. But when beam champion Ashley Postel injured her shoulder, Mo took her place and had an opportunity to compete and compete. She did. In a rather unprecedented climb, Mo finished. Six that trials and took the silver on vault. Another release skill. Now this is critical right here. Watch this. She actually originated that skill. Not called the Mohini yet, but... And Tim, that skill's worth an E. Two-tenths bonus. It's huge. That's dismount. Look at that. Maybe in the competition, maybe in the world. Mohini's pursuit reached its pinnacle at the 2000 for Summer Olympics in Athens. Even though the journey to the Olympic stage was far from smooth, battling injuries and financial constraints, she encountered setbacks that tested her spirit. Yet, fueled by a burning desire to represent her country, Mohini defied the odds. Although, falling short in individual events, her contribution to the American team's silver medal triumph exemplified belief in staying positive through adversity. However, once again all of that would be tested, as without a moment's notice the ultimate challenge was now in front of her. Mohini's teammate Courtney Kupitz obtained a small injury during warm-up and she would not be able to perform on balance beam. And with Courtney McCool pulled from the competition without notice, Mohini had to go back to the place she was years ago in college. It all came down to this. She once again faced an extraordinary task of delivering greatness on beam. She was in the same place again, and this time without notice or any warm-up, an unthinkable task in a three-up, three-count competition. An Olympic medal was on the line, and the world was watching. The women's team final, medals tonight, and we've gotten some crazy news from Andrea Joyce that Courtney Kupetz has come up with some sort of a leg injury in the training gym and has been pulled out of her performance on the beam. Now, Taryn Humphrey, Carly Patterson will now be joined by Mohini Bardwaj. And the plan was never for her to do the beam in the Olympic Games. And do you think it's affecting her a little bit? She is all by herself trying to get herself ready. Well, we'll see what she not do today on their last podium training on this equipment was warm up and alternate. They warmed up the three that were going to go. So does anybody have any idea the last time Mohini Bardwaj did a beam routine? The last time was just a few days ago when she was up on this balance beam leading off the team in night one of the competition and she really did her job. She did it very well. 
The problem with this set is it's only valued out of a 9.8, and that's if she does everything very well. What a spot to be in. Yeah, it's like worst case scenario, Al. <laughs> Mentally to be up just to compete in the games, it's a monumental task, but to think you're going to get a little bit of a break, catch your breath a little bit, and then all of a sudden be put in on balance beam. Oh, a little bit. That was a, a big mistake, actually, and it's probably going to cost her another tenth. She did a punch front summy, was supposed to connect it into another skill, and she didn't do that. Everything considered, how was that? All they could have asked out of her, I'll tell you, Al. It could have been a heck of a lot worse. She steps in. My book, she's a hero. If you were granted one wish, what would it be? Would you inspire others, seize new opportunities, or embrace the unknown? Mohini's story teaches us that the answer is simple. Any wish can become reality, no matter what obstacles stand in your way. In the end, it's up to you to grant your own wishes and fulfill your dreams. Mohini Bardway's journey from humble beginnings to Olympic glory embodies the indomitable human spirit. Her story serves as a testament to the power of perseverance, resilience, and unwavering determination. Through every triumph and tribulation, Mohini's unwavering commitment to her dreams inspires us all to reach for the stars and never give up, for every success story begins with a dream.